Welcome everyone, it is Dr. Lindner, and uh, today we're going to be looking at the endocrine system. So let's take a look. When we look at the endocrine system, we have to also do a little bit of contrast to another major player when it comes to homeostasis. Uh, in terms of what systems regulate homeostasis uh, within the human body. Now, remember, homeostasis is when there's a dynamic state of change that's going on in the body, right? It's not like your blood pressure is always 120 over 80. Sometimes it needs to go higher. It's not always that your, <clears throat> your uh, heart rate or your pulse rate is at 72 beats per minute. Sometimes it could be 150 beats per minute if you're if you're running or you're doing high intensity exercise training. So the two systems that regulate and control homeostasis in the body is gonna be the neural system and the endocrine system. And together, these two systems are gonna coordinate all of the bodily functions. The neural system is going to release neurotransmitters, whereas the endocrine system is going to release hormones. Now, both of these are going to circulate through the blood and they're gonna to bind to receptors that happen to be on target cells. And that's both holds true for hormones as well as neurotransmitters. They too will bind to receptors on target cells. Now, in contrast to exocrine glands, exocrine glands secrete their products into ducts, right? They don't release them into bloodstream, they release them into ducts, none of which are gonna be hormones. So exocrine glands include your sweat glands and your oil glands, and your sweat glands are called sudiferous glands and your oil glands are called sebaceous glands. Then we have uh, mammary glands, right? They produce milk. We have mucous glands in the stomach. We have a lot of digestive glands. These are all exocrine. Exocrine can release things and substances to the external surface of the body, or they can release things into epithelium. And that's why we have the stomach and the intestines that can secrete exocrine glands and release hormones through these exocrine glands uh, into the digestive tract, into the stomach, and into the intestines because it's made up of epithelium. So it's releasing something into the epithelium. Now, endocrine, they're going to release hormones. Okay, endocrine glands, they don't have ducts like exocrine glands. Instead, they're going to secrete their hormones directly into the interstitial fluid. Hormones diffuse into the bloodstream through the capillaries, and they're carried to their target cells throughout the body. Just a few examples of some endocrine glands that we will talk about uh, in this lecture. There's the pituitary. And when we talk about the pituitary, there is an anterior pituitary and a posterior pituitary. We'll talk about those. The anterior pituitary is also referred to as the adenohypothesis. And the posterior pituitary is referred to as the neurohypothesis. Then we'll talk about the thyroid and the parathyroid, the adrenal glands and the pineal glands. When you look at the word adrenal, we see renal, which is kidney. And then you're adding something to it. This is what we call it the adrenal gland. <clears throat> now, certain organs and tissues that are not part of the endocrine system, they also secrete hormones because these parts contain what we call secreting cells. So secreting cells could be found in a part of the brain called the hypothalamus. There's a part of the brain called the thalamus, and the thalamus is the relay station. You will learn when you do neurology. Uh, it is the relay for all sensory input coming into it 
but the hypothalamus, hypo means under, so the hypothalamus is below the thalamus, anatomically speaking, and it is a major regulator of the autonomic neural system, the ANS. When we talk about the autonomic neural system, or the ANS, it's divided into the sympathetic and the parasympathetic neural system. And it really like regulates bodily functions like it does it increase your heart rate or decrease your heart rate does it increase digestion or decrease digestion does it increase the rate of respiration or decrease the rate of respiration i most people think of the sympathetic and parasympathetic as like the accelerator or brake of the car one of them usually speeds up and the other one typically slows down okay uh the thymus the pancreas the ovaries and the testes, right? When you think of ovaries and testes, we're thinking reproductive, but these contain secreting cells. The kidneys, well, the kidneys are part of the urinary system, but there are secreting cells. Well, the stomach, the liver, the small intestine, those are part of the digestive tract, not part of the endocrine system, but they do contain secreting cells. The skin, the heart, Fat cells and the placenta all contain secreting cells. Okay, let's take a look at some of the major glands that we find in the endocrine system. So within the brain, we can see that we have the hypothalamus, we have the pituitary, and we have the pineal gland. And you need to be comfortable in knowing what hormones are released from each gland and then what their primary functions are. So in the hypothalamus, it, this is where antidiuretic hormone is produced. And this is where oxytocin is produced and many regulatory hormones. When we call them regulatory hormones, they are either stimulatory hormones, or they could be called inhibiting hormones, right? If, if the hypothalamus is secreting a stimulatory hormone or a releasing hormone, then it's gonna be like an on switch, but it can also release or secrete an inhibitory type of hormone, which can turn off the switch. So there can be releasing hormones and there can be inhibitory hormones. All right. Um, you'll see that the hypothalamus produces antidiuretic hormone and it produces oxytocin. And what you'll see is that the pituitary gland, especially the posterior pituitary gland, is storing the antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin and has the power of releasing it. So ADH and oxytocin is produced in the hypothalamus, but it is stored and released by the posterior pituitary, also known as the neurohypothesis. The anterior lobe or the adenohypothesis, that releases uh, thyroid stimulating hormone, growth hormone, prolactin or prolactin releasing hormone, follicular stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, and melanocyte stimulating hormone. The one in the front that I left out is called adrenocorticotropic hormone. Adrenocorticotropic hormone. The pineal releases melatonin. And we'll go over what some of their functions are in just a little bit. In this slide, I just want you to be familiar with um, the main glands and what they release. <clears throat> and I do have another illustration that will go, will, that goes through these and what their connections are. Okay, let's look at the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland is located here in the throat and the thyroid gland has this shape. It looks like a letter H, right? If I were to draw it, it kind of looks like that. Okay, looks like a letter H that's here in the throat. And there's an isthmus 
that's in the center that connects uh, this lobe with this lobe, right, going across. But on the posterior side, I'm going to draw one, two, three, four. So on the inferior lobes and the superior lobes, there are four glands that are called the parathyroid gland. So the parathyroid gland, you'll see on the description here, it's located on the posterior surface of the thyroid gland. So these two are going to be linked somehow, the thyroid and the parathyroid, and they do work together to regulate uh, calcium balance, and I'll show you how shortly. The thyroid also uh, releases T4, which is known as thyroxin, T3, which is known as triiodothyronine, and calcitonin, whereas the parathyroid gland produces PTH, which is parathyroid hormone. Now the T in T4 and T3 stand for uh, tyrosine. So when you have tyrosine with four iodines, it's called thyroxine. And when you have tyrosine with three iodines, it's called triiodothyronine. Okay, we have the adrenal glands. Here's the adrenal, it's right above the renal. So sometimes the adrenal gland is called a supra renal gland, suprarenal. And the adrenal gland has an outer portion and an inner portion. The outer portion is called the adrenal cortex, and the inner portion of it is called the adrenal medulla. The adrenal cortex, core cortex, produces glucocorticoids. They produce gluco corticoids, the biggie being cortisol and cortisone. It also produces corticosterone. So it's cortisol, cortisone, and corticosterone. It produces a mineral corticoid called aldosterone. Aldosterone is a mineral corticoid. And then androgens as well. These are all produced by the adrenal cortex. Whereas in the adrenal medulla, on the inner portion, there's adrenaline and noradrenaline, also known as epinephrine and norepinephrine. Now that's the, again, you see renal for kidney, but it's adding something to it, the adrenals. On the right-hand side, when we look at the kidneys themselves, the kidneys are going to secrete EPO, which stands for erythropoietin. The term erythro refers to erythrocytes, or red blood cells, and it produces calcitriol. This is what we refer to as vitamin D. Vitamin D. The kidneys are involved in producing vitamin D. The pancreas. The pancreas is a mixed organ because it's endocrine and exocrine, so we call it mixed. The endocrine portion releases insulin and glucagon. Insulin and glucagon. These are blood sugar regulators. And again, I'll get into more detail in a little bit. The gonads, which are the testes and the ovaries, are going to produce sex hormones. The testes are going to produce androgens, especially testosterone. And the ovaries in the female are going to produce estrogen, progesterone, and inhibin, as well as inhibin in the testes. Okay, there are some, um, the heart also has these secretory cells, and the heart can release atrionaturetic polypeptide, ANP, and in the word atrial naturetic in the word naturetic the first two letters na stand for sodium so this hormone is involved somehow with sodium regulation as is aldosterone that is produced in the adrenal cortex except 
aldosterone and ANP are going to work in opposite manners. One of them wants to hold on to sodium, whereas the other wants to get rid of sodium. Okay, they work antagonistically. The thymus, the thymus grows and hypertrophies for the first few years of life, and then in adulthood it starts to atrophy. The thymus is part of the immune system, and it secretes thymusins, which is involved in T cell formation for your uh, immune system. You've heard of T cells before. Fat cells or adipocytes secrete leptin, and leptin is involved in um, helping people feel full when they eat foods that have fat in it. Okay. Adipocytes are also metabolically active and they secrete something called cytokines. Cytokines, cytokines are, can be inflammatory. They are chemical messengers that can be inflammatory. So the more fat cells a person has, the more inflammation their bodies could be under, which could make any inflammatory condition worse, whether it's osteoporosis, which is inflammatory, diabetes, which is inflammatory, MS, Parkinson's, rheumatoid arthritis. Um, these are all inflammatory conditions. So extra fat cells or adiposity that are secreting cytokines can make any inflammatory disease worse. The digestive tract also has secretory cells in it. Um, one of the biggies is that uh, within the uh, duodenum of the digestive tract, the duodenum can release something called CCK, which is cholecystokinin. And cholecystokinin is released by the duodenum, which is here, right there. And it releases CCK if there is fat that's been consumed by the food that you've eaten in the stomach. If that fat is dumped into the duodenum, then CCK is released and it's going to stimulate your gallbladder to release bile. And bile is a fat emulsifier. Okay, so the whole idea here was just to introduce you to some of the names of these main organs. And now we're going to go into some of their functions and what they do in this slide when we come back.